Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I welcome you this morning and a happy Mother's Day. Uh, we give thanks to, uh, to all the women in our lives who have nurtured us and cared for us. And um, we give thanks to God for the, the wonderful women in our lives. Um, all right. Announcement wise. Um, reminder that our confirmation class is meeting next Sunday uh, from 6 to 8 in the Celebration Center. Um, next Sunday is, is a busy week. We have our first communion, and that's going to be a special service at 9.30. We wanted to have it um, so that family could gather. Um, and so we invite you to tune in on Zoom at 9.30 in support of our young people who are receiving First Communion. Um, and um, as well as attending the regular 8.30 and 11 o'clock services. We also have a baptism next Sunday at 11. So lots of great uh, things that um, celebrate the way God makes promises to us and keeps them. So. Um, that's, I think all I, oh, the next um, drive through communion is uh, May 23rd, so two weeks from now, and hopefully it'll not be raining. Um, at this time, we have a Spring Into Bloom video, and we'll turn to that now. Good morning. I want to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We appreciate and love everything you do for us and know we couldn't survive without you. So, as we come to a close of our Spring and Bloom campaign, I'm sorry to say that I can't be with you in person today. Uh, we are having a Race for the Cure Walk Where You Are event. For my wife Kathy, for the Susan B. Komen Breast Cancer uh, Society today, and due to the pandemic, uh, they're asking everybody to you know, walk where you are in your neighborhood. So uh, I'm participating in that uh, at our uh, home neighborhood with, with some friends and family today. But as we draw off to a close with our Spring and Bloom program, I just wanted to thank everybody out there for your generosity and your work and your care your consideration for the congregation and the well-being here at Berkeley Hills. We appreciate all the efforts. We appreciate the donations. We're not finished. We need to finish real strong, and hopefully we can achieve our goal of $30,000 for the Spring and Bloom campaign. Enjoy your day. Have a fantastic Mother's Day. And let's hit that goal. Take care. God All right, and I'm also going to invite uh, Myron Kaplan to come up and say a few words as well. Well, <clears throat> good morning and happy Mother's Day. Now you know my name is Myron Kaplan, but you probably don't know that I joined this church in 1971. That's a while ago. Our family was immediately welcomed into the church by the pastors, but it was the members who helped us fit into this family of faith. During my 50 years, I looked for ways to grow my faith and actually bloom it if you will. Those ways were involvement in the opportunities available at this church. I think I've held just about every position you could possibly think of in this church, from Sunday school teacher, vacation Bible school teacher, stewardship, council, president, and more. So my advice to members here, new and old, 
is to get involved after this pandemic slows down. Sing in the choir. Become a worship assistant right here. Join the UP team or the Alder Guild. You will find that participation will lead to better attendance and ultimately more generous sharing of your talents and your money. I guarantee you that you will feel good doing God's work. Gene and I love hearing God's word here every week. We love this church and continue to bloom, not only in the spring, but summer, fall, and winter. Caring for God's world is not year round, it's a lifetime. Thanks. Thank you. Um, appreciate those who've shared their story and for all of you who've had an opportunity to give a little extra right now. Um, there's still opportunity. Uh, ask you to prayerfully consider uh, what you're able to do. At this time, we'll begin with our procession and invite you to stand. Please stand. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We begin remembering that we have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, your love knows no limits. You meet us on our life's journey with healing and forgiveness. Strengthen us so that we may more faithfully follow your gospel and so celebrate the feast of your resurrection with joy. Amen. Let us confess together. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. By the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the children's sermon. So I asked Pastor Scott if it would be okay with him if I took his spot on the children's sermon today. This is our third week of watching the butterflies grow. So they started out as tiny little worms that ate and ate and ate and ate and ate. And then they turned into chrysalis, which are hard little shells where they are just kind of goo inside. And then this week, they turned into butterflies. And you can see on the screen there, they are painted lady butterflies, which are small little orange um, on the top and brown underneath. So when their wings are folded up, they can hide really nicely on trees and in branches and leaves and things. But when they fly, they're beautiful orange and, and black butterflies. Um, God does this amazing, amazing thing with nature. God makes it work just perfectly in creative and imaginative ways. I mean, who could even dream up that this weird little worm could turn into something so beautiful? Now, actually, I think some worms are beautiful. Yesterday, I saw, oh, what were they? They were these big turquoise um, uh, caterpillars. Um, oh, he told me what they were, too. Horned somethings. Um, and they were gorgeous. Uh, they were nice in the container. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I wouldn't want them loose in my house. But... Um, Nature's beautiful and, and creative, and God has this amazing imagination. And I think about this when I look at butterflies and think about where they came from. I think about this when, when I think about how my body works, right? How my mind works and how my heart pumps blood everywhere to make sure that oxygen gets places and how my lungs breathe in and separate the oxygen from, from the other stuff in the air and just all those amazing things that when I eat, it gives my body energy. That, that when I think, my foot moves, you know? Just these amazing things. And God put that all together, the way the world works. The most amazing thing, the most creative, the most imaginative thing God, God did was to think that something happens after death. That there is new life after death. And, and God fought this up, and then he put it into action in Jesus Christ with his own son, who died on the cross and three days later rose again to new life, right? Amazing. No one ever thought that this could really happen before, and then they saw it with their own eyes. And they were so amazed and in awe of God and of Christ that they went and told everybody. And we're still telling everybody, right? And this is what Easter is. This is what every Sunday is. This is what our faith is. That Christ is risen. It's he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit 
fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the the splatter for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. But this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies for the spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You can be seated. So back 110 years ago, 113 years ago, Henry Ford very famously applied the, um, the, the technique of assembly line uh, construction to the manufacture of cars. And in so doing, made his cars much, much cheaper than everybody else's. And he became obsessed with keeping the things as, as inexpensive as possible, and one of the ways that you do that is you limit the options. He famously has said, you can have a Model T in any color that you want, as long as you want black. My family moved here, and we began uh, uh, our life at Berkeley Hills 
in the summer of 2008, right, as the housing bubble was popping and the economy went into a pretty big slump right after that. And one of the things that I noticed just going around in stores and, and things, actually I noticed it first at one of the Halloween shops. There was less variety. And then I noticed in other places, things were available in fewer colors. There were less options. This is what happened when there was less market. They couldn't sell as many. Choices are a sign that things are going well. The better you're doing, the more choices you have as to where you live, what kind of place that you can, can live in, and what, what kind of things you can eat. Uh, the better that you're doing, uh, the, the more mobile you are, physically, financially, whatever, the more you can get around and do things, the more places you can go. The better you are doing, the more options you have as to what kind of work that you would like to do and where you would like to do it and how you would like to do it. And if you're doing really well, you even have the option of how much you get to get paid for it. More power, more know, worldly success means more options. And, and if you look at just the things that we say, the kind of phrases that we use in our everyday speech, you can see how much we value having choices. It kind of puts us in the driver's seat a little bit, right? Just the things that we say. Make good choices. Or we say, oh, it's your choice. Or, I don't like it, but hey, it's his choice. Right? Or, um, you can be whatever you choose. Now, that's not always true. Right? We, we always say this, and we say this to kids, and we <coughs> say this, <coughs> all this kind of stuff, you know. Just, you can, you have the choice of how you live your life. Just to, you, but you don't have the choice of everything. There are, you can't always choose where you're going to live. You just might not have the opportunity or the income or the exposure. Or right now the market's not there to, to choose where you want to live. You cannot always choose. Not everybody can say, you know what, I think Thursday I'm going to go to Paris for a couple days. And then after that, maybe we'll take a long way, swing by, hit Singapore on the way home. People don't have that choice. You know, you're, you're lucky if you think, wow, maybe we can do Shaler today. But, but, but um, we don't, you don't always have that choice. You do not always have the choice of how you spend your time. We just have so many demands on our schedule. We don't have the choice of all the people that we know. Well, I just don't know anyone who could do that. Or wouldn't it be nice to know somebody who, and, and we don't, we know who we know. We know who's in our area, we know who we're related to. We might be lucky and have some, some connections that, that sort of open weird little windows of the world to us. But we don't always control that. And really, in a lot of ways, our limits shape us at least as much as our choices do. And then there are certain things that we can never choose. You can never choose what your genetics are, your ethnicity, and, and, and uh, you can alter your appearance, but you can't change the basics. Who your family is, you can't choose. You, you, know, you, you, you can't choose where you were born. And all of those things influence who you are. And we absolutely cannot choose what period in history we are given to live our lives. If you were born in the, in the 20th century or born in the early 21st century, you live a very different life than you would have had you been born in the 16th century or the 11th century or the 3rd century. Just huge differences. We have no choice over that at all. We don't think about this. We like to think that we can decide 
that we can steer our own lives. We like to make the big choices. So, we're in church, what's the question? Can you choose Jesus? There's a lot of the Christian tradition that says, well, absolutely, and this is their big thing. Choose Christ, invite Christ into your life. Choose Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. But that's not what the Bible says. And it's not what Jesus says. Not even a little bit. Jesus says in our gospel lesson today, you did not choose me, but I chose you. We are not in a position to congratulate ourselves and say, see how smart I am, how wise I am, how holy I am, how pure I am, what insight I have that I chose Jesus. Jesus isn't our choice. But the truth is something far more beautiful, far more wonderful than that, far more miraculous than that. You didn't choose Jesus. Jesus chose you. Jesus is not your choice, but you are Jesus' choice. You follow Christ because Jesus chose you. You follow Christ because Jesus called you to follow him. You follow Jesus Christ because God has sent you out into the world. You did not choose me, says Jesus, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear much fruit. Jesus chose you. Jesus chose to lay down his life for you. Jesus chose to tell you truth. Jesus chose to forgive you. Jesus chose to love you. Jesus chose to make you his friend. Jesus chose to rise for you. Jesus chose to give you life. And Jesus chooses to send you out into the world in his name. In the small catechism, right, Martin Luther writes in the small catechism, in the explanation to the Apostles' Creed, the third article, the part that I believe in the grocery list, I believe in, in, in the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, that one. Luther writes this. I believe that I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him by my own understanding or by my own strength. You did not choose Jesus. Of course not. We're not in charge. But God is in charge. And God chose us. We don't choose Jesus. Jesus chooses us. That doesn't mean that we don't have any choices, because we do. We have a lot of choices. Because Jesus chose us, things are great for us. Because of Jesus, Jesus chose us, we have more options than we would have otherwise. Because Jesus chose us, we can now choose to live like a disciple. We can now choose to serve others as Jesus serves you. We can now choose, because we have been chosen, we can now choose to live for other people the way that Jesus lives for us. We can choose to share Jesus in our words and in our actions. Jesus chose you so you can choose to show Jesus with your very life. Jesus chose you. Make good choices. Amen.
Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. O oh, loving God, bless all mothers. Bless their forgiving hearts, their open arms, and welcoming smiles. God of our salvation, Heavenly Father, through our masks, you know that we smile or are sad. Through our masks, you hear us as we whisper a brief prayer or just grumble. Our friends and families can't see our faces, but you do. We know you are with us during these troubled times. God of our salvation, God of strength, we trust you will protect those who are working so hard to control COVID-19. And there are many. Bless our pastors, Heather and Scott, and everyone as they try so hard to bring things back to normal. God of our salvation. Dear God, we pray that we will continuously and generously spring into bloom to make the efforts of a few the actions of all, making your church a stronger place. God of our salvation. Lord of compassion, we ask that your loving hands be on those suffering, including those on our prayer list and those that we now name in our hearts. God of our salvation. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, amen. Lord of life, through this meal you put in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger and still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may be the lives of all peoples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen and brings us new life. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, Jesus has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Alleluia. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Alleluia. Please be seated. Those who are receiving Holy Communion at home this morning, please take your bread. The body of Christ given for you. And now your cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. For those who are receiving Holy Communion in person today, we invite you to come forward at this time. The feast is ready. <laughs> 